my name is Adam Boabda and I run a company called Couch Potato Films. We do television, film and online video production. Fantastic. And what inspired you to do the media? Um, I've always loved films, like more than anything. Um, my family were in the restaurant business and I loved films so much I opened a small cinema, <laughs> which was a restaurant at the same time. And then I made the jump into actually making films instead of just showing them. So, when you got your idea, what was the next thing that you, you did? Well, the idea spanned from when I had the cafe, which was the, re the restaurant cinema. And basically, some students came in to make me an advert. And I looked at what they were doing, and I was like, that's really cool. And I bet I could do a better job than that. Um, and so then CCAD, which now is the Northern School of Art, it used to be Cleveland College of Art and Design, um, they had a film course running. And I just thought, what the hell, I'm going to give it a go, you know, and um, I thought it's the way to get into film production is to learn about it first, because I really didn't know anything about it. Okay. And what was the name of the course that you did? Do you remember? Creative Film and Moving Image Production was the course name. Wow. Yeah, it's quite a mouthful. Yeah. TV and film would have been better, but you know. So how long was the course? Um, I did a bachelor's, so it was a three year course. Um, I ex it, it was a good experience. Um, not completely a good experience. There was things in it where I thought, do I really need to be doing this? Um, I sort of, I, I learned a lot in the first three months and then everything from then onwards was me sort of learning on the, on the go. Um, I, but I got to use the college's facilities. I got to um, use their equipment. Um, I got to use, um, like work with people. Where had I been doing that by myself, I probably would never have done it. Mm -hmm. So it was great in the fact that it gave me the, the resources and the people to actually do things. Yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest fan, by the way, <laughs> of education. <laughs> I really am not. We'll keep that bit off. Um, <laughs> no, it's, no. It's, real. it's about being real, isn't it? Mm. Um, so was it easy to add this into your business then? Because you already had your business. Was it easy to add this in? <sighs> I ended up having to close the other business. Um, I mean, I graduated film school in 2015, in June. I closed uh, Flix Movie Cafe in January 2016. And the transition was, was tough. I had to get find something that I wanted to do in film. For me, I managed to get a part-time editing job for a YouTube channel. And that YouTube channel then took me on as a full-time editor. Then they took me on as the, the, basically to run the channel. I film it, I produce it, I do everything. Now we run five channels for them. Um, one of them's got 1.5 million subscribers. When I took it on, it had about 300,000. Um, so over the three and a bit years, we've built quite a big sort of empire, if you like, on YouTube. Fantastic. Do you want to say what that is? Yeah, I can do, yeah. Um, so the YouTube channel is called Nail Nails. And I never thought I'd work on a nail art channel. Um, but for me, it's about creating content. It doesn't matter what that content is. It's about just putting stuff out there and actually earning a living from what I enjoy doing. Um, because I think that's one of the, 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 the biggest problems um, with a lot of people is they, they go and earn a living, but it's not something that they actually enjoy doing. And I think entrepreneurs have sort of... That's what we do. Yeah. We, we find something we like and we work out how we can live by doing that. Brilliant. So did you think you were going to be an entrepreneur when you were younger? Um, so my dad, um, he ran restaurants and I grew up in the restaurant industry. And when I was probably like five, six year old, he used to have like a, a tray, like a, a cash tray. And I would count that all out and I would organise all the money from... He'd basically give me a bag full of coins and I'd have to organise it all. So that was the first step. And um, then I went to work for my dad when I was probably about... Well, I know how old I was. I was 12 because I got paid £12 a week and it was because I was 12. Believe me, I did more work than a £12. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been getting at least £20. Um, but it was, it was good experience and... I've always been trying to make, not just make money, but try to, to, to facilitate. You know, it's not just about being, there's no point in just trying to make money and, and not helping anybody doing stuff. So I used to do my paper rounds, my milk rounds, and then I would use that money to buy sweets at the shop, which I'd then sell at school. 
and to be honest I'd go home most days with 20 quid in my pocket from nothing mm. but it was hard work but it's something that I just enjoy doing it and then working again with my dad and then opening my own my own place it just felt right so when you left school did you know what you wanted to do no it, when I left school um, I left with good grades in maths and science and I was going to become a math scientist that, that was my plan I was going to do I was going to chemistry physics and maths a levels and then whatever when I went on the careers day and I hold it against them but I don't as well when I went on the careers day I was convinced by the people who were who were at the college to do a business course because my dad ran businesses mm -hmm. and they thought it would help me now it's definitely helped me um, but they did do, they did try to get me to do something I didn't want to do right so it was a bit of a funny one okay I don't know if what well, I might have been a mad scientist you know yeah that would have been fun There's still time, <laughs> <still> time. <laughs> <laughs> so thinking about young people now mm -hmm. what advice would you give young people about what they want to do and how to do it and things when they're leaving school um, or college? Well, the thing is, I was 31 when I went to university. I was 31 when I figured out what I wanted to do. Yeah. And even now, these, like, at the moment, I'm still kind of like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do this. And it's, I think if you've got that kind of mind, you just have to sort of give it a go, you know, and, and, and not be scared to fail at things. That's the biggest thing. Don't be scared to fail because... Failure is a massive part of what it is. I failed with my cafe, you know, and and I knew it was failing like way before it ended up failing. Yeah. And that's why I went to film school and I thought, right, I'm going to take another path. I had a million other ideas. I mean, I used to sit at the end of the bar on my computer coming up with new businesses. I was going to be doing custom T-shirts. I was I created Deliveroo before Deliveroo came out. <laughs> I, I went around all of the takeaways in Hartlepool, all of the like McDonald's, got the prices, built the website. Oh. It was called We Deliver, and and I never did it. And look at them now, oh. all over the world, multi-million pound business. And yeah, but that's the thing. I've come up with tons of ideas like that. Yeah. Um. So I think for young people, you just follow whatever you whatever you've got an idea with research it you know look into it and 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 the, re the research part is massively important more than nine times out of ten somebody's probably already thought of it mm -hmm. but it doesn't say that that doesn't stop you from doing something yeah. um working hard that's the other thing it's uh, people don't realize how much commitment things take to yeah. get off the ground it's i mean i've been running this business uh, couch potato films for Four years now. LinkedIn told me that the other day. Um, four years it's been running for. It's been a little bit longer than that as well. And I'm just now starting to get to the stage where I'm being commissioned for television. I've got feature films on the on the like in development, uh, as well as being really successful in YouTube. Um, and I mean, we make a lot of money based off just the YouTube channel. Never mind the other stuff. And um, well, the YouTube channel we run. Um, it's we don't see all of this money. Um, because it's it's the company who we run it for, um, but it makes about fifteen grand a week. Uh, sorry, fifteen grand a month. Wow. Um, sorry, I'll say that again. That one makes fifteen grand a month. Wow. Um, so that for anybody who and we're not generating that much content. It's probably like four million views per uh, month. Um, we put out on that one channel. We put out twelve videos a month. So when you look at these daily vloggers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people who are putting different content out daily and they're reaching, let's say they're getting a million views in a day that's around about £5,000 worth of, of ad revenue it's a massive amount of money but it's not easy It takes. firstly you've got to have the equipment yeah. um, and that doesn't mean you have to have all singing, all dancing immediately you can start off with your phone You can set, if you haven't got lights you sit by the window facing the window so the light's hitting you if you don't have a microphone, you can sit as close to your phone as possible so that you're getting crystal clear, you make sure there's nobody else in the house. Um, and if the dog's yapping, you kick the dog out of the back garden. Um, you've, there's little things that you can do. Never hold the phone, always have it on a, if you don't have a tripod, put it on the windowsill. And just make sure it's like, it's professional. Look at your favorite YouTubers and then go back to their first videos. So what I always say is go back to their first videos. 
Imagine what they look like, like what, what they are now, but then go back and see what they started with. Yeah. Guarantee most of them started with a webcam on a, on a laptop. Yeah. And yeah, and no lighting and no nothing. And it doesn't take long to build that up. It really doesn't. YouTube are making it harder to make money, um, but it's, they're not making it hard. They're not doing it on purpose so that people don't make money. What they're trying to do is they're trying to make sure that people stay committed. Because yeah. it does take a long time to actually get to that monetization um, element of it. Um, you've got to have a thousand subscribers. Now that's the new rules. And you have to have 240,000 minutes of watch time in the previous 365 days. So that's a, it sounds a lot. Mm. It's not that much. If you get one video that's, let's say, 20 minutes long and you get 50,000 views on it, more than likely you're going to hit that hit that target. Mm. So it's not that difficult. you just got to keep putting the content out there. Keep putting it out. Mm -hmm. So in terms of your businesses then, mm -hmm. what do you think has been your greatest achievement? Um, I think presently what I'm going through at the moment, which, which, which is Channel 4, um, we've got some brilliant commissions. I've just been told today that I'm probably going to get another two as well, so that's seven in total. Uh, nobody else has got more than four, which is brilliant for, for me. And to be honest, I've been really cheeky. And I just said, if anybody is dropping out of this, because I know there have been some people dropping out, I'm your man, I'll take on whatever you need me to do. I'll make sure it's delivered on time and bloody good content. Um, and they're trusting us with that, so hopefully we deliver, you know. Yeah. Fingers crossed we absolutely deliver on that. So how many hours of work would you say that you pour into? Oh, to get to that stage, yeah. thousands of hours work to get to this stage here. Yeah. Like, because it's it's been a four-year business, a four-year sort of um journey but for to do these to do a three minute short film um you've got to find the talent so i'm working with some brilliant comedians other youtubers as well some rappers um and we've had, I've had to find them build a relationship with them get them to trust me find their ideas out then we began the scripting process and some of these people don't write so then i either have to get involved with the writing process myself or form a relationship with another writer then bring them in and then you start talking about directors of photography so that's the cameraman in simple terms i suppose yeah. um then you've got your directors so who actually direct the project that could be me it could be somebody else that we're bringing on board then you've got your editor um so who's going to edit the film but then you've also got the actual production itself You've got a production manager, you've got um, production runners, you've got um, a production designer, you've got costume designers, you've got makeup artists. There's just so much that goes into this, it's unbelievable. So yeah. for a three minute comedy short, which is what we're being commissioned to make, you're talking, it's, it's probably going to be around about 20 hours of everybody's time. Yeah. And there's probably around about... I don't want to do maths on the fly. But there's probably about 20 people involved in the production. Right. You know, so 20 hours of 20 people. Is that, is that 400? Not, Something not like that. <laughs> no. uh, it's a massive amount of, 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 of man hours that goes into it, and yeah. woman hours, obviously, yeah. um, that, that are going into these productions. And then we're getting seven of them. So Fantastic. it's a bit crazy. <laughs> yeah. So in, in your business, what's been the biggest surprise? Um... The amount of support that's out there, that's a massive one. People, a lot of people think that if you go into business, you're completely by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not at all, but you need to go out and search the support. I've had support from all over the place. And that doesn't just mean in monetary, it could be in mentorship, it could be um, in going, being exposed to different um, places. Like for instance, Two years ago, pretty much now two years ago, um, I got an email from the Department of International Trade, or as back then they were UKTI. Um, they were putting on a trade mission to the American film market in Los Angeles. Um, I had a little bit of spare money and I thought, do you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the plunge and I'm going to do this. I had no idea what to expect. So American film market is exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it's a market where there's lots of sales agents, producers, distributors, financiers, everything to do with the film industry, like the behind the scenes stuff, are there. None of the big stars are there, um, but it's, it's where the business gets done. Mm -hmm. So I just took the chance and I went, right, I'm going to LA. And my wife was just like, you're going where? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to LA, I need to learn this stuff. And it was a big commitment from me, from her as well, because I've got a child and 
and that meant I wasn't going to be around for a week and and a, a lot of money was going to get spent on it so we we did it it was brilliant and then I've since been to um, the Berlin Film Festival I've been to the Cannes Film Festival I've been back to um, American Film Festival again wow. Film Market again I've been to Sitges and networked this is what it's all about is networking um, it's very costly but being up here in the northeast it's costly to do it anywhere so if I have to go down to London for meetings I may as well fly to be able to fly to Berlin yeah. and do all of the meetings in two or three days yeah. you know and meet with so many more people yeah. I get asked to do you want to come for a coffee and I'm like yeah yeah not a problem where you're at London ah, it's not exactly feasible for me to go down to have one meeting yeah so the market's actually are much better for that because you'd get to meet so many different people yeah. so many different companies yeah. um, networking is a massive thing but yeah the support that's out there um, and and I like tell people this all the time this is one thing you need to go out and grab it. it's never going to come to you so in terms of support starting out mm -hmm. was the support available locally yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, the, when I first started my business, I went to Hartlepool Borough Council and I said, what kind of grants have you got? And I already knew about grant systems. You have to do your research. You need to tell them what you want to do. So I was doing a project which involved um, creating a YouTube channel and I needed equipment. You know, I knew what, what, the, what my audience was. I knew what my return was sort of going to be on it. And so I went to them and they helped me out and I got a £2,000 grant. And that managed, I managed to buy some camera equipment and some lighting, some sound equipment, and that just got us the ball rolling. Then, like I said, the Department of International Trade, the, when you get into a set, a set level where I'm at at the moment, I'm trying to make a feature film, which is classed as an export if I sell it to, like for the moment I'm talking to some Can Canadians, it's an export. So they're helping me now to pay 50% of all my travel. Um, I have to spend the money. And then I can claim some claim it back without VAT, which was a shock. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's brilliant. So Tees Valley Combined Authority are involved in that, helping out because that's where the money's coming from. Um, there are, for instance, there's a television and film charity, um, and Northern Film and Media, and they run schemes together sometimes, so that because they recognise that here in the northeast we're isolated, there isn't a massive industry, a television or film industry. Um, and so they're supporting us and financially. So when I have to go down to London, what I do is I, I schedule four or five meetings um, and then they'll pay for, again, I have to pay for it and then reclaim the money, yeah. my travel, my accommodation, even for food and drinks while I'm down there, yeah. not alcohol, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but they, they really, really help us out. And I think at the moment, I think you can claim up to about £1,500 £1, a year Wow. through the charity I've got to the point now where I don't need to use yeah. it but they've been yeah. I think I probably had around about two thousand pounds worth of, of, of grant from them yeah. and all I have to do is say to them right I've got these meetings they check up on them sometimes and then I tell them the outcome of those meetings and we get the money back so this part's there it is absolutely but you do have to ask for it yeah um so you'd mentioned you touched on a couple of skills there to be an entrepreneur mm. What, what sort of skills would you say are the really strong skills that you need? You mentioned networking, so communication. Yeah, communication's a massive one. And I tell you what, even I get nervous going into rooms sometimes. Um, it, it doesn't matter where I'm at, um, I get nervous going into rooms. But you just have to suck it up and just go, right, I'm going to do this. And it's like, hi, my name's Adam from Couch Potato Films. Um, and I hate saying Couch Potato Films. <laughs> <laughs> I came up with the name while I was at university and it stuck and I hate it and people go wow that's original and I'm like yeah it definitely is original you're not going to forget me so that's a good point of it but I hate saying it because people go what <laughs> um, so you've got to have confidence you really have to have some confidence and that just comes by doing it absolutely yeah. comes by doing you can't just expect to go out there and do it and don't get me wrong I've made an idiot out of myself a couple of times but it's that whole ethos of don't be scared to fail. Um, you have to, you have to, you just have to do it. You really do. And I think you have to be organized. I, for, the, for many years, I have not been organized. And that's been my downfall. That's why I've had failures in the past because I wasn't organized. I'm still not massively organized now. Um, 
I've got a tray of receipts this big, uh, which I need to, to, to sort out, but it's, I'm getting there with it. But you need to use a calendar. That's such an important thing. Yeah. You need to have notifications to tell you that you've got meetings um, and you need to make sure that you don't cancel meetings all the time. And yeah. you have to, have to act professionally, as, as professional as possible. You can have fun. You can absolutely have fun, but especially when you meet people for the first time, you've got to be as professional as possible. Yeah. And also be a good judge of character because you see how they come at you and you can reciprocate that as well. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to go all gangster or anything like that, <laughs> but it's kind of... Unless they're going full gangster, you can as well, I suppose. But unless it... Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, determination is massive. You have to be so determined. Um, you have to know what your goals are. You have to set goals for yourself. Um, my goals are within the next five years, I want to be the biggest production company in Hartlepool. Kind of probably am at the moment, I think. Uh, so that's my five year one. So in 10 years, I want to be the biggest production company in the Tees Valley. In 20 years, the North East, and I want to be doing high end television. Um, so the kind of stuff that you see on the BBC, like real high end stuff. And I want to do it here in the North East and with North East people. Um, because we don't get our fair share and the rules are changing and and the, the broadcasters are listening and they're coming out and that's why channel four have given the five commission uh, sorry the 25 commissions to the northeast comedy Heart house which i've now got several of those and so they are starting to listen and i want to take advantage of that and and grit in the teach valley here at the moment there's a real push on creative um, businesses there really is there's some amazing stuff going on and i want to be at the forefront of that so them are my goals. So you have to, even if your goal is to sell so many things per week, you have to set that goal because then you can say, right, if I sell that many things and it doesn't matter what it is, we'll call it a widget. Um, Jonathan from the uh, Department of International Trade always says widgets. So it, if, if you sell five widgets, it means that you can afford to then buy more for the next week yeah. so that you can then hopefully sell 10 widgets and just you keep it going and you grow yeah. and you grow and you grow. And... One of the other things about that I think you need to be able to do is ask for help. Yeah. You really do try and, like, nobody can go by themselves. Um, some, some very special people can. Um, and, and in the film industry, everyone always goes, Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese. They're, all, they're few and far between, those people. They are massively few and far between. The, the people that work in this industry are bolstered up by who they work with. So you've got to find really good people to help you and then eventually work with you to grow something. You can't do it all by yourself. Great. Okay, is there anything else? Um, the, well, you've already yeah. mentioned, but it was what were your future goals, but you've just yeah. talked about five, ten, yeah. ten years' time yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. So I suppose maybe finishing with, is there anybody who inspires you? Um, me dad... And that's, I know that's dead cliche, but he started, and he's, it's well known in the restaurant industry, he started with £250 and, a, and some big dreams, or whatever the piece of card on the table said. Um, and that's what he did, he started with 250 quid, and he grew, he grew to having three restaurants, plus involving me in his restaurants and stuff like that, and, and now he's involved in a newspaper and stuff. So he's always been sort of like an inspiration, because... It's not that he's incredibly talented, and he'll probably hate me for saying that. And he always says he was a cowboy chef, and he just can make stuff taste all right, I suppose. But he was just, it was the, just the, the work ethic, yeah. the consistency. That's his favorite word in the world, consistency, because it was always consistent, whether it was good consistency or bad consistency <laughs> that you got. Um, so, so definitely him and... A lot of people look to certain directors and certain films, but I don't think that I'm my own person um, and, and I will achieve what I want to achieve. Um, everybody's their own. I think sometimes people strive to be somebody else a lot of the time and you shouldn't. You should just sort of just keep plowing along and sometimes you'll surpass who you thought was the person you wanted to be.